Food Heals Podcast, episode 237. I'm Carrie. I know. I always say you're Carrie and I'm Charlotte. I'm Samantha. (laughs) I like bouquets in my mouth. (laughs) I like jasmine and apples and stuff. (laughs) What else do you like in your mouth? (laughs) Well, we're going to have to drink a few more glasses before I tell you that. Is that a new podcast? podcast? Coming up next, Uh, Amanda (laughs) Deming sex tips. (laughs) I have a lot of those. But the kind of superficial, meaningless questions you've been asking me, I can easily handle it. (laughs) Okay, now you guys have been awesome. Wow. (laughs) You're sexy, you're savvy. That's a first, Dr. Khan. No one else has really given a shit before on our own podcast, but that's great. We need it. It keeps us in check. What you're talking about? Let's just sell some product at the break. I am not going to fall in line with whatever you think the the socially accepted body needs to look like. I mean, I was really that yeah. girl. <laughs> did you stop shaving your armpits? Yes, I did. I, I'm Dude. psychic. <laughs> <laughs> so it is the shimmy, and you just relax the glutes so that everything jiggles. This is probably the only time I ever love everything to jiggle. Well, I can think of one other time, but it's probably not appropriate for the show. <laughs> we built this city. Oh, yeah. We built this city on rock and roll. God, you ladies are amazing. <laughs> Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody, and happy, happy new year. Today's show is going to be really fun. We are throwing back to some of our favorite moments in the show from the past three years. And as many of you know, Susie has taken a step back from the podcast. Doesn't mean she's not going to co-host anymore. She's just not doing every episode like she was in the beginning because she's following one of her dreams and she has started her CBD oil company, CBD Fountain, which has some amazing products that you can check out. The coupon code is Food Heals for 20% off your purchase at CBD Fountain. But I wanted to celebrate Susie and all of the wonderful moments we've had together. So here are some of our favorite clips from our favorite episodes. Happy New Year. I hope these inspire you and I hope they make you laugh. For any episode that you didn't hear that you want to make sure you go back and listen to and hear the rest of a story that we didn't get to tell today, make sure to check out the show notes at foodhealsnation.com and you can click on a specific episode if you want to go back and listen and hear the full story because these are just clips. All right. Happy New Year. Enjoy. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. So you have an inspiring weight loss story and you overcame an eating disorder, asthma, and you became now you're this healthy, hot mama with your podcast. (laughs) But can you take us back to like, where did it all start? Yeah, so I would really start it where probably most anyone who has ever dealt with some sort of like a food issue would would probably identify, which is kind of my my upbringing with food and what that was in my family. And in my family, it was everything. That's what we, you know, my mom showed love through food. And so it was a lot of eating. It was a lot of eating on a budget. So it was about lots of portion for little amounts of money. Right, and right. Um, I learned at a very young age how to eat at a buffet. Um, it was if you're going to pay $5 <laughs> for a buffet, you better get $25 worth of food. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. So it was, it wasn't, I can't even say it was just like just the food thing. It was like, it was getting your money's worth. (laughs) Yes, very much so. And those two things were so uh, intrinsically connected. So it was never about quality of food. Not to say my mom is is actually a very good cook, but it was more so about the quantity that we could get out of it. So fast forward, the idea that I spend $4 on a non-dairy butter is just ridiculous. It doesn't even matter that I don't <laughs> use butter, that butter that much, right? That's my right. way to understand it. So anyway, and I was also an athlete. I was an avid athlete, still am. What that looked like was I could eat whatever I wanted while I was, you know, junior high, high school. And I loved um, those days. <laughs> <laughs> no, and girl, girl, did I take myself up on those days? I, yeah, 
I, I miss those days. Anyway, please continue. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I could eat whatever I wanted and I would be at whatever practice for whatever sport I was doing for three to five hours a day and right. in yeah. whatever PE classes I was taking for two hours a day. So right. I was working it off. I wasn't ignorant to the fact, like I knew even back then, like I'm eating too much and this is not good. Like I, I knew that back then, <laughs> but uh, what ended up happening was that I went to college and I stopped being an athlete. Uh, I still worked out, but I stopped being an athlete. And so I was no longer having these five to six hour intense training days. And I was still eating the way that I was used to. And right. all of a sudden, you know, over the course of the five years that I was an undergrad, I had an extra 60 some odd pounds on me. And at that point, fast forwarding into those college days, that's when I really fell in love with women and who we are in this world as a whole, because I was starting to take like feminism 101 classes and women in communication. And it just opened my eyes. And the marriage of those two things, the overlapping of those two things allowed me to stay in that heavy space for a really long time, because I was the one really chanting you will love me even if I'm, you know, big and bold. Who cares? Like, I am right. not going to I am not going to fall in line with whatever you think the the socially accepted body needs to look like. I mean, I was really that. Yeah. Girl. Did you stop shaving your armpits? <laughs> yes, I did. I, I'm i psychic. Yeah. <laughs> vision her not sh- it's like stop. I get it. I went to Berkeley. I went through that. Phase. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Down with the man. I am woman. Hear me roar. I'm not going to totally. shave. Totally. Susie, I was did like, you stop shaving your armpits? Did I? No. But I was surrounded <laughs> by people that did. <laughs> Imagine if, if you're always in a state of like health crisis and suffering and you're weak and you're, you're down and out, you can't actually spread that much light out in the world most of the time. Right. In, in certain cases, you may have exceptions where you're an inspiration to others through your recovery story and whatnot. Sure, but, sure. but generally, the more vibrant and, and deeply strong and healthy you are, then you can really like have an impact in the world and, and touch others. And, and your spirit is, is beautiful and balanced and nothing can shake you. So that, how do we get there? <laughs> so you start, you start with the kidneys and the adrenals. You start building the Jing, uh, taking Jing herbs in small amounts, just regularly taking them. So if not, I drink a cup or two a day, yeah, that's a, so you're getting the herbs into your system. Okay. That's perfect. That's fabulous. Okay. I'll and start then, there. So you really want to identify where you're leaking Jing, whether it's through any kind of excessive living. If you're stressing too much, working too hard, not getting really high quality sleep. If your diet is poor, if you're taking a lot of drugs, you know, maybe you're, you're living and eating super healthy all week, but you do a bit of heroin on Friday night. Um, <laughs> and that could be a, a Jing leak for you. It might not be in you know building your long-term health <laughs> you pick that drug <laughs> <laughs> i have never met anyone that has heroin in no, my life <laughs> casually no okay no. what about excessive alcohol consumption i know yeah, a lot of those go. there you go <laughs> that may be a bit more common in our world here and so some people you know if, if they want to know there are organic wines out there that are actually filtered with clay or papier bouvard um, they're a great alternative, and they meet the vegan standards. I was just going to say, let's get to the wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's we could talk it. about this forever. <laughs> <laughs> we can still talk about clay. Let's take a sip. Let's take a sip. What is right. this, Allison? What are we drinking? Organic agriculturist. And it's a this, white. It's a white table wine from Mendocino. So it's not necessarily a Sauvignon Blanc or a Chardonnay. It's a table wine. So let's it's a blend. It's a blend. Cheers, Cheers ladies. Cheers. Cheers. It's a health and happiness. Yes. It tastes um, almost like a Chardonnay to me. It's a little nutty. I mm. like it that. It tastes almost like it has a beer finish. I mean, we're just talking about beers. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's got this interesting... It's, it's a, light. It's it, very light. It's nutty on the end. Yeah, it's nutty. Mm-hmm. It's not a huge bouquet in my mouth. It's <laughs> nice and subtle. I could drink this on a nice, warm summer day. It's a table one. Yeah. For sure. No, I like it. I like it a lot. You guys like it? Yeah. I like the nutty. Scale of one to ten. I would say eight. I would say eight, too, because the, the nuttiness kind of threw me. Like, it's not as something of a, I've, I've ever had with a white where it finishes that way, but yeah. it's still nice. It's still drinkable. I like bouquets in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I like jasmine and apples and stuff. <laughs> what else do you like in your mouth? <laughs> oh. Well, we're uh, going to have to drink a few more glasses. Is that a new podcast? Is that a new podcast? Coming up next, uh, Amanda Deming's <laughs> sex tips. <laughs> I have a lot of those. <laughs> that will be a future podcast. 
so John, can you talk a little bit about SMART goals and what the acronym SMART really means? So SMART goals are key because so many people just get this wrong from the very beginning and they wonder why they don't accomplish goals. Because if you're not setting a SMART goal, then there's no, there's no, should be no surprise that you're not accomplishing it because you need these five attributes to make the goal real and to make it uh, actually a goal that is attainable. So I'll kind of break down those five acronyms and attainable is one of those words. But if you want to set a SMART goal, it's S for specific, M for measurable, A for attainable, R for relevant, and T for time bound. So to kind of break through that, a lot of people will just say, hey, I want to lose weight. And okay, we all want to lose weight. Most of us do. But why do so few of us actually lose weight? Because we don't set a SMART goal. So specific. Yes, that is specific. You want to lose weight. Is it measurable? No, you got to set something to measure, to measure it by. What does even success look like? Well, I want to lose two pounds and two and a half percent body fat. Is it attainable? Yes, I know it's attainable. Like I know my, you know, when I started that that was an attainable goal to set. Is it relevant? Well, yes, it is relevant for me because I want to look better, feel better, have more energy. Is it time bound? Yes. Thanks to the Freedom Journal, your goals will always be time bound, pushing you forward. So that's your smart goal. Yeah. And I like the last one because I don't remember who said it at the podcast cruise, but it always stuck with me. It might have been you. It might have been someone else. But it was, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that's the epitome of why the Freedom Journal works. And I'm saying that and I haven't started it yet, but this is why I believe it works because not only are you you're your own accountability partner, but you are making that plan that you then have to stick to and you're accountable for writing every morning and every night. Every morning, every single night. And I do love that quote. And um, I'm sure one of us amazing speakers yeah. said that quote at some point on the cruise. Someone or said it. I don't remember. <laughs> over some brewskis. I don't remember what it was, but whatever it was, um, it was great. And, and I'm also, I want to add to that. Parkinson's law, which is tasks will expand to the time allotted. So if you don't allot a specific amount of time, your task is going to expand into infinity. Like you have to set that goal. Oh, I love that. I just had a flash of what was that character from Toy Story? To infinity and And beyond! beyond. (laughs) (laughs) Ladies are too good. Susie's the comic, really. Yeah. The comedic, really. That's me. That's why I love her. But it flashed in, and I was like, that's true, though. If you don't, Give yourself a, you know, I've, I personally have goals. I was like, yeah, I want to do that, but I haven't set a time to it. And it does extract stretches to infinity and beyond. (laughs) And there's another acronym. I'm obsessed with these now. And I know I learned this one from you guys. Um, (laughs) You and Kay always talk about focus. Can you please break that one down? Focus is follow one course until success. And and that's a huge problem with a lot of people. Oh, they don't follow that one course. It is my problem, number one. I got so many things going on at all times. I'm like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and nothing gets done, right? <laughs> so I love that one. I have to tell it to myself every day. But break it down a little for our listeners. So with focus, it's so key because, you know, a lot of us, again, and going back to what you said, you do a little bit of this, you do a little bit of that. If you instead just really just genuinely focus all of your effort, all of your energy on that one task and just knock it out, you're actually going to complete it. And that's the problem is so few people ever complete things. They have all of these, you know, half completed, three quarters completed uh, tasks and projects all across the board. And it's just, you know, it's like a battlefield um, post, post battle. And it's just really sad. Now I will say nobody's perfect. I mean, believe me, I, you open up my Kindle right now, I got books that are 67% done, 81, 39. I mean, I'm all over the book with books because, you know, sometimes I just lose momentum and I don't finish them. JLD, uh, you're not perfect? On. Like, I'm you're like perfect. one of us? I'm like one of everybody. <laughs> oh my God, it makes us feel so much better. <laughs> and, but when it comes to actual projects that I have, I'm like, I'm going to dedicate all of this time, all this energy, this block to just doing this until it's done. And then I make that happen. And so, Again, instead of just just starting things and just kind of leaving that open loop, and that messes with our heads too. Like we don't like open loops as human beings. Like we like to close loops, and it just feels so good. Like when you can be like, I just wrap this up with a bow and I'm done. Like you know, think it back. Like when you were actually wrapping presents, you know, back during Christmas, and you know, like when you put that bow on, you tied it tight, and you you stuck that little ribbon on, and that you know, to mom, you know, love John, like whatever it was. Like you're like, wow, like this is complete and you place it under the tree and like it's done. Like it doesn't feel great to half wrap a present and like leave it laying around the house. I mean, we want to complete what we start. 
Absolutely. And I feel like one example of this is just getting started with Susie and I starting this podcast. And we totally credit you listening to the free podcast course that you offer on iTunes and going, okay, step by step, what? Yeah, whoop, you can whoop, whoop, whoop. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And so it was the step by step process that we followed and we took. Um, Putting this all together, once we got through the eight weeks, I was like, finish one course until complete, uh, you know, success. That was done. And that felt amazing. Mm, so good. And now it's ongoing, but it's it's not something that we have to complete. It's just something that we built and now we can continue with. And it's been We huge. built this city. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we built this city on rock and roll. <laughs> God, you ladies are amazing. <laughs> it's a miracle. I mean, and I say this after 26 years of practicing cardiology and about 10 years, it's a miracle that three to four weeks after somebody finally grabbing on to this clean, clean plant-based diet and, you know, just do the Ornish, do the Esselstyn, do the Barnard, do the McDougal, they'll, their, their need for medication goes down. And I mean, I've seen it. I didn't believe it early in my career, but it happens. It happened in the office. We have this giant thing in Detroit called the plant based nutrition support group, kind of a grassroots thing we did to help people on their way to just give them some support and lectures. And we've got now over a thousand members and there's so many that will tell you, you know, I'm, I'm on no diabetic medicine for my adult diabetes. Uh, I don't need my blood pressure medicine. You know, this all has to be done carefully. So dramatic examples. Uh, and they'll all say, I love my internist who never told me this was an option. Until I watched Forks Over Knives, I had no clue. Until my neighbor told me he comes to this plant-based group, I didn't know my psoriasis might get better by eliminating dairy and you know, doing an elimination diet and uh, upping my antioxidant load from fresh fruits and vegetables. So, um, you know, it, I'm, I'm struck all the time by how fast, particularly when we're going back to that endothelium, nitric oxide, Every bad meal you eat affects that quickly. Within an hour, you are temporarily damaging your arteries. Every Big Mac, every uh, bacon BLT you eat, Mm -hmm. and every green smoothie and every chia pudding. I keep saying chia pudding because I'm standing in front of a refrigerator with a bunch of chia pudding. And every, Mm -hmm. you know, beet salad and kale dish you eat does the opposite within 30 to 60 minutes. So... Our body's just waiting for us to get out of the way and feed it, uh, you know, fiber-rich, nutrient-rich, uh, antioxidant-rich whole foods that are brightly colored, and uh, it'll do the rest. Just let it let it heal. And there's no doubt the science favors that a clean diet favoring a plant-based diet creates the healthiest microbiome right now. Uh, makes a uh, the, the most dramatic example in my field. There's an awful chemical that's been recently described called TMAO, TMAO, not TMI, but TMAO. Mm-hmm. And if you take a vegan and you pay them enough and tell them eat a sirloin steak for research, and you measure their blood, they can't make this awful chemical that damages arteries. You take anybody off the streets, they eat a steak for fifty bucks. Of course, they're happy, and they make this stuff instantly. And it is wow. the bacteria in the gut. And we we just grow this great garden of bacteria when you're eating clean and lean and green. Treat your bacteria well, and your bacteria will treat you well. And that's all based on a, a good, healthy, clean diet that's not excess salt, oil, sugar. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. I've never heard that. That's really interesting. Very, very hot science in the last three years that's going to change the course of cardiovascular disease because for the first time this week the lab test came out so i've been drawing this lab on my patients at first in the state of michigan and it's going to start spreading but you know it's going to define for people you know your gut is screwed up baby and uh, this is no game anymore you're you're a tma making machine and let's change your diet and uh, we can recheck it in a few weeks I love it. All right, Dr. Khan, where can everyone find you online, follow you, stalk you, read your books? Yeah, sure. Comedy Central, Saturdays, 8 o'clock, <laughs> live in Ferndale, Michigan at the Green Space. Uh, no, I'm at uh, drjoelkahn.com, but that's D-R-J-O-E-L-K-A-H-N.com. That'll take you to my clinic and my restaurant website. They're all there. And there's a free newsletter you can sign up for, but... Once you sign up for it, I will 
hound you every day with emails. No, I won't. <laughs> Just once a week, you can unsubscribe. And my books are available there. They're on Amazon. Another book coming out in January called The No BS Diet. And another one on mindfulness coming out uh, a little later in 2016. I love to write the mind, body, green. I'm blogging all the time. So, yeah, you know, and if people have questions, uh, there are places on my website to ask. And I can't give real specific medical advice. But the kind of superficial, meaningless questions you've been asking me, I can easily handle it. <laughs> okay, now you guys have been awesome. Wow. <laughs> you're sexy, you're savvy, you're bright on target and hip and modern and everything's great. That's a first, Dr. Khan. No one else has really given a shit before on our own podcast, but <laughs> yes, that's great. Right. We need it. It keeps us in check. about what you're talking about. Let's just sell some product at the break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that's really important. It's like this... All of what we're talking about here, you really have to educate yourself. I mean, how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? But it's really, it, it is very important to know whether you're omnivore, vegan, vegan, vegetarian, where your food is coming from and what you're putting on it. And exactly. Yeah. Well, I think also when you're, when you understand where your food is coming from, you feel more connected to what's on the plate. Like mm -hmm. you make smarter choices. Like when, when you go to the farmer's market and you speak to the farmers that actually picked that vegetable, uh, it's it's kind of a really cool experience because you know the story behind it and you take a little bit more care and preparation. And, and when you're eating it, you can kind of feel, I don't know, it's kind of cheesy, but like you feel the soul, like you feel the energy. Yeah. You feel that like energy of where that came from and the care that and love that went into a lot of love at the it. farmer's market. Exactly. For There's sure. lots of love. God, it's my happy place. <laughs> I was going to say, is it like your church? You go there Seriously, and... <laughs> like praise carrots. <laughs> When you're in Miami, <laughs> this is the only thing. It's Las Vegas without gambling, yeah. but a beach. So yeah. if you've ever been to Las Vegas on Friday or Saturday, that's what it's like. And it's and it's constantly happening. I love the place. And uh, <clears throat> then I quit at 32 years old. And I, got, I said I was only going to play 10 years. And I did a pilot, TV pilot. And uh, I went and played in Greece. And uh, I did the pilot the summer after winning a championship with the Bulls. Then I went to Greece for six weeks to wow. play, quit. Should have come back and played uh, in the NBA. And not, instead, I just chilled and stayed out here in Hollywood until that was 19 years ago, until I was, you know, making it happen. And I've done a bunch of shows and, and acted and... I was a vegetarian in 91 when I was 27 years old. I went into microbiotics. Mm -hmm. I was a lying vegetarian. That's what I call them. A what? A lying. lying vegetarian. A lying vegetarian. I thought you said lion vegetarian. I was like, right. that's... That'd be crazy. That'd be a, <laughs> that'd be a skinny lion. <laughs> that's a good website name, lion vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, lion vegetarian. But I, and then I just decided a pot, I did a PSA for PETA eight years ago. And I just decided to never lie again when I turned 40. And I'm 51 now. So at 50, when I stopped lying, uh, it took 10 years to get it to the point where, you know, you literally say the truth without brutality. So I'm not brutally honest, I'm compassionately honest. Meaning, when you're quiet, you can hear more. So true. But if you don't speak up, you become part of the problem. So, <laughs> mind equals blown, Food Hills Nation. <laughs> and that's what a resolution sets you up for, right? Because resolution just sounds so like resolute. I'm not good enough, or I'm doing something yeah. wrong, and I have to change it forever, and it's got to be perfect. And I yeah. have to. It's not I want to. And if to. I don't do it by February, I've failed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I like to think of it. And it's kind of, it's evolved, so I'll call it a New Year's evolution. Mm. Just like there's no food revolution, it should be an evolution. There's a lot of love in the word evolution to evolve and to get bigger and stronger and, and just be better and more, you know, more at home in your own skin. Yeah. And I think that being present and learning to be more present and paying more attention to those details and being there for the, for the people, the thing that matters most, that's sort of how I start all my New Year's. And it's funny how it's never really a thing. Like, it's not like as she was talking about 20 pound weight loss or I'm going to get a new car or I'm going to change it my way, whatever. It's just I want to be more present. I want to have the eyes to see, the heart to feel, and the ears to hear the things that will make me better. Mm -hmm. And those can be a thousand things. They can be small things. They can be something that just allows me to be more present. 
And that's when the needle moves and big things do happen. And there's no time date on them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember back in my early 20s, I had a couple of years where I was doing the gym rat thing. Gold's Gym, Plymouth, Massachusetts. <laughs> and, uh, Shout out. Yeah, <laughs> representing in the house. And uh, I, I remember, you know, every January, the regulars at the gym would just be like, oh, here comes the New Year's resolution, people, you know, and they'd be there for like, you know, two weeks and then you right. know, they'd drop off. Yeah, they'd always be this. <laughs> and it's great for gyms because they have a huge spike in gym memberships yeah, yeah. in, yeah, in yeah. January. And then everybody just drops off. It's an artificial kind of social construct where people think that, oh, it's New Year, so I should make a resolution. And but their their heart's not really into it, you know. So I still feel I feel it's a good time for reflection mm -hmm. because, you know, starting a new year, starting any kind of new cycle like that, it's just it's a good time to to pause and kind of check in and be like, hmm, you know, uh, how are things going? And are things going in my life the way that I want them to? What can I improve? And it's a good time for that. I, I tend to do that more myself on birthdays and just kind of generally do that as a whole. But um, it's just a good thing to look at the the cycles in your life, to look at, you know, the seasons and, you know, you do more cleansing, you know, in the spring and the fall and, you know, things like that. What a great idea that you just get up in the morning and then you get that vibration moving. Mm -hmm. And then what I try and add to that is opening myself to guidance. Because if I can say somehow, even if it's for a split second every morning, I don't know. I have no idea. So help me to see what I need to see. Yes. Help me to hear what I need to hear. Help me to support where I need to support. Because if I'm running on my, nah, Sophie knows every, you know, mm -hmm. then I'm not, I'm going to miss those clues. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I try and do for a split second. I think that's a magic combo is rampage of gratitude mm -hmm. followed by moment of still. Well, you know I what love that? that. For, sorry, you're going to talk. But I heard her say rampage of gratitude and I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with that. And now I heard you say it. I'm like, is that what she said? Susie, I want to have a rampage of gratitude. You do. That's amazing. You it's do. It's a really good way to say well, it. Well, you know yeah. what, what I just wanted to now add? Now you're going to talk. What I just wanted to add was that... Um, <laughs> I had a series of things happen in my life where I was not grateful for them at all. And I was like a stubborn little toddler going, no, I am not going to be. How is that helpful? No, that is not what I intended. This is not what the secret said. <laughs> and, the secret lied. Yeah. yeah. But what it, what for me, what gratitude does is put me in that place of being happy. And when we're talking about New Year's resolutions, we all want change because we think it's going to make us happier. We want to lose the weight or get the boyfriend or the girlfriend or get married or get yeah. the house or get the so job true. because we think we're going to be happier. Mm -hmm. And that's the secret. That's the right? lie. So if you can, <laughs> that's the lie. Sophie, what you're just describing is kind of both, but stepping back just a couple minutes ago, what you're talking about, the, the raw emotion part that is really a, a way of describing the emotional feminine process. And then what I was describing right before that is kind of like the analytical masculine perspective. Yes, you it's know? so true. <laughs> it's Cause, so cause true. Because the masculine just wants to, you know, pick it apart and, and mechanically yeah. you fix, know, it. fix it, fix you know, it. and then the, the female wants to, you know, process the, yeah. more of the emotional side. So, so yeah. true. That's so true, Jay. Yeah. My husband's like, okay, so what are you going to do about it? Right. Yeah. right, right exactly. How can we move from A to B? My husband yeah. has a flow chart yeah. prints it out <laughs> that he learned as a strategy that you put in the problem and you put in all the obstacles and the obstacles obstacles are actually what helps you solve the problem <laughs> yeah. and, and all you women understand why that's so like helpful and logical right yeah <laughs> of course Jay, of course exactly drop into a masculine tone yes yeah <laughs> fix it fix it no, but that makes perfect sense to me <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our heater is broken right now, so I'm getting the cold sleep every night. And I guess it's good for me. I don't love it, <laughs> but I know it it's good, good for It is good for you. I remember the few times I've gone camping when it's like fall or, or even winter, which was not the most comfortable thing. But but the cold air, God, I slept so well. Yeah, you wake up so refreshed. I think one of the things you two are really good at is gratitude. So before going to bed, thinking about three or four things that you're just super grateful for. And if you can bring yourself into a uh, state of gratitude, so much so to where, you know, your whole body has goosebumps or there's tears coming from your eyes. I think that's a perfect place uh, for creation. And what I do in that moment of being totally presently aware of how grateful I am is I'll start to think about the next day. And 
I, I learned this from a Native American medicine woman in the Yucatan jungle. I'll literally transfix myself into an eagle and I'll see as if I'm like through the eyes of a bird uh, as I drift off to sleep. I know it sounds crazy, woo woo. Like there's people listening. Oh, I love it. No, I love true. this. Keep going. I'm married, but I think I love you. Like I just you're you're talking. <laughs> You're talking, this is like foreplay. Like, you're talking, you're talking shamanic and green juice. So, yeah, we love all this. Please continue. We already have chills from you speaking. Yeah. That's our gratitude for the day. I haven't said that to anybody on our podcast before, but I will say. Yeah, you really haven't. Not only to me, not to yes. the guests themselves. Well, thank you for that. You made my day too. So thank you. Well, blesses one, blesses all. <laughs> The stories that we tell, the work that we're doing is not just inspiring people, but in some cases, saving lives. And I know you guys are doing the same in the work that you're doing. And so when you start to just adjust your focus and give people support and tell your story, you can change someone's life. And so this becomes not just about how can I have this like really fun career and how can I feel like I'm being seen and heard, but much more about how can I be of service in a way that's going to have a really big impact on the world and, and, a, and a world that's suffering and a world that's traumatized and a world that's unwell and a world that needs more transformational teachers and leaders. And if we don't accept the abundance that we deserve for that type of work, then we can't do that type of work. So you have to be unapologetic about your abundance. Oh, I have chills. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really nice feedback loop here on this on this podcast. I like you guys. <laughs> well, you know I'm your spirit junkie soul sister. I'm like, give me more Gabby. Like <laughs> I am your avatar. Like I am the person that will follow everything avatar. you do. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just ask the question to you, like what is one of the number one things, or you can list a few, like whatever things that you learn from Gabby, because we're both spirit junkies. We're both graduates. What would you mm. say like, really taught you? Oh my God. I mean, there's so many things. Um, honestly, this is a super challenging question because there are that many things. I think number one, she first provided me a space, um, of a person who was being more her, like was, was stepping fully into who she was and she didn't care. So number one, first she gave me permission to start looking at parts of me that I wasn't owning, which was my spirituality, because I was so afraid to start sharing spirituality within. And, you know, I came from a fitness background, like who am I, who's this fitness girl who does fitness programs and like just talks about fitness stuff to start. Are you kidding? Have you seen Jesus's abs? Have you seen <laughs> Jesus's abs? He was ripped. <laughs> I've never heard that. That is like the best thing I've ever heard. If, if that's the only clip from this podcast, then that would make me happy. So food, I, I, you know, food's probably my favorite. You know, I love to cook. I love recipes and I'm really proud of my recipes in the Better Brain Solution book. There's kind of like three groups of food that improve your brain. First is plant pigments. I mean, let me give you some examples. Number one would be like green leafy vegetables. You know, they don't sound super sexy, but when you think about it, not if to us. Eat, they're so sexy. Okay. Well, I'm glad you, well, you and I feel that way, but sometimes when I'm talking to an average audience, your audience is probably exceptional, but when I'm talking to an average American audience, and I say green leafies, they look like disappointed, but when I tell them, here's the key point. If you eat one cup of green leafies a day, your brain is 11 years younger than someone who doesn't have any. 11 years. I mean, that's a lot. Wait a minute. This is new information. This is one we haven't heard before. Okay. Is it, is it cumulative? Because Alice and I would be like 10 year olds at this point. No, I'm like, no, no. Eight. But it's like if you look at, you know, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, 60 year olds, and those who eat green leafies and those who don't consistently, those people who eat more greens have younger, healthier brains. Yes. I'm like a little kid over here. So you should and be so like 11 years younger. Yes, I love this. The only key to being healthy in life is a large variety of nutrients found in plants in the world. I mean, that that's it. That's Amen, the bottom Susie. line. That's Amen. it. Well, Susie came over today and she was like, oh, we can't drink wine because you're on a juice cleanse because I had three juices lined up. And, and here I bring <laughs> over champagne. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm not on the wine. Thank you, Le Grand Cortage. Um, <laughs> but I actually am a way bigger fan of smoothies than juicing. First I had a smoothie, then I had two juices, <laughs> then, I, then I had a soup, and then Susie came over. <laughs> I like them both personally, and I find benefits in both. Like I would not give up either. 
I think you can do a smoothie cleanse just as easily as you can do a juice cleanse. Mm -hmm. My smoothies are intense. My smoothies have a lot of stuff in them. Lay it on us. What's in your smoothie? I kind of laugh when everybody picked up that story about Gwyneth Paltrow having a $200 smoothie and how all the ingredients added up. I didn't even hear that. Yeah, but it's not per smoothie. Right. If you were going to buy all of the ingredients in bulk and then make your smoothie, you would spend that much. But, I mean, I added up mine and it's closer to 300. Um, <laughs> what is in your smoothie? Okay, are you ready? This Lay is, it on This me. is my ultimate smoothie. Coconut water uh-huh. is the base. Chia seeds. Uh, ginger. Turmeric. Carrots. Apple. Cayenne. Lemon. Black pepper to make the turmeric, the curcumin more absorbent. Avocado. Spinach or Swiss chard or kale, whatever I pick from my garden. Baobab, mm-hmm. maca, mm-hmm. Japanese fleece flower. What is Japanese fleece flower? Yeah, I've it's never even heard that. Incredible stuff for your skin. Oh, I'm 65. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to start a 21 day detox and I do the shakes and then I do the vegan meal, which is fine with me because that's already what I eat, would I want to keep doing an intermittent fasting protocol? where I didn't eat or do a shake until later in the day, or would I want to stick to the protocol that's in there with the 12 hours? Like, what would you recommend? Or is it just individualized and I decide? (laughs) Yes. So these are all great questions. And this is literally like, this is nice because this would be a typical online customer question or patient question, any of these things. So yeah, this is great. So my, my answer is that you follow the Dr. Brawl Detox exactly as it's laid out because that's what's proven to work. And though, the reason is that that shake in the morning is not going to spike blood sugar. If anything, it's going to help to stabilize it. Plus, it contains the nutrients and the cofactors to help speed up detoxification. So your goal right now is faster detoxification. So that's why we're doing this. And also, we're not making it into a smoothie for the Dr. Well Detox. That comes afterwards, like to make these delicious smoothies. For now, it's simply shaken up in a water bottle to go. Like it's super easy. We make these little small containers. You can pop it in your bag and keep it at work, the car, like really, really easy. And then after you complete the 21-day detox, um, there's a couple things that are going to go on. One is you're going to start to introduce new foods. And by introducing those new foods, you'll now know if those foods cause digestive issues for you. Because I'm looking at you right now saying, okay, you need to go 16 hours, 17 hours or or so because you don't feel great in the morning when you eat. And I'm always asking why. Like my bottom line is I keep asking why till I get an answer. So I'm thinking about someone, I totally agree with you, that if you're not ready to eat in the morning, there's an issue with metabolism and there's an issue with detoxification and potentially lymphatic congestion. So I'm going to have you run two tests. I'm going to have you run the thyroid adrenal hormone test to see when you're fasting, does that spike cortisol levels or are you okay? I'm also going to look at your thyroid. And then I'm also going to have you run what's called an organic acids test. And we can link all these up if you want as well. But the reason I'm going to have you run that is I want to check for the candida overgrowth, the bacterial overgrowth, the clostridium difficile. I'm going to actually look at your detox factors. Like I'm going to look at glutathione. I'm going to look at ketone production, all of these things to make sure that this isn't a deeper issue. Because if you tell me you have to do something, I know that the human body should be more flexible than that. Meaning like the more adaptive and flexible I see someone, like they can travel time zones, they can eat or not eat, they can skip a meal, and they still feel good, that is a great sign of a very well-balanced, healthy body. And that's what I try to create for everybody. Sign me up. That is fascinating. (laughs) I know, sign me up. (laughs) Me and Susie are like, where do we sign? And one thing I'm really impressed that you did, because I know a lot of people that I personally know are scared to do this, is you left the full-time job before your passion was monetized. Yeah. You just trusted that this was what you were going to do and you were going to figure out a way to do it because you're passionate about it. And I feel like that's so important. Like you have to take that risk. If Mm -hmm. you know you're good at something, if you know you're passionate about something, take the risk. It's going to pay off. Yeah. And it was scary. I'll never forget that first week that I'd quit working full time. And, you know, I had my job with Apple, so I had something to fall back on and I could up my hours there, but it wasn't, it wasn't really enough. And, and luckily I had put into place all this freelance work. I'd, I'd started freelancing, you know, doing social media consulting, doing editing, doing videography, like all of those things I'd been building up for years were really helpful for me in the beginning and also credit cards. <laughs> <I> had- <laughs> 
All right. And what is one belly dance move that we can do every day to improve health, happiness, and sex in us? So it is the shimmy. (laughs) And I will walk you through a verbal direction of how to really do a shimmy. So if you go back to like ancient various ancient cultures. So the Chinese, they do, um, Qigong Mm -hmm. belly dance is kind of like the women's ancient, it can be used for ritual. It can be used for moving energy, for healing, for emotional, for, it wasn't originally like to turn men on. Really? (laughs) because <laughs> it's pretty damn sexy. My mom it's actually studied. My mom actually studied belly dancing. Oh. I remember going to see her recital mm-hmm. when oh. I was like eight, and she loved it. And like, and and I've seen professional, and I've actually taken some classes. But we should go do this. That would be fun. Um, I've taken some classes myself, and it is a very sensual movement, and all originating in the hips and moving up the spine and. It's pretty sexy. Oh, it's very (laughs) sexy. It's very sexy. And it's great for helping women feel sexier in their bodies and having more body confidence and self-confidence. So the piece with the shimmy is in Qigong, they say that if you shake every day, disease can't live in the body because disease is stagnated energy. And so the shimmy, one of one of the mechanisms of action is that you are kind of like shaking up your energetic system and stimulating the nervous system and increasing blood flow to the pelvis, all good things. And it just makes you happy. Mm -hmm. So the way I'm actually going to stand up while I explain it, because it's just more fun that way. And I'm going to be in my office right now. (laughs) So you're going to start with, with feet, like shoulder to hip width apart under the hips, Mm -hmm. feel all four corners of the feet, wiggle your toes, and then you're going to bend the knees. So you can just see the top of your big toe Mm -hmm. and you're going to drop your tailbone toward the floor. Okay. And then you're going to drop down a little bit deeper. So if this bothers your knees, you can come up a little bit. If you can get deeper, you're going to get a little more hip action. Okay. And you're going to lift your right hip up toward the right ribs and just kind of straighten into that right leg. And then you switch. So then the right knee bends deeper. The left leg straightens a little bit. That left hip comes up and you just kind of rock back and forth, keeping the tailbone toward the floor. I can do that. Beautiful. (laughs) So you just start with like a gentle right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And there's different techniques. You can pretend you're like, you know, hitting the car door closed if you've got an arm full of groceries on each side and get a little more lateral motion or you can do more up and down. And I'm doing it right now. Beautiful. So then the way you get the shimmy is you just get a little bit faster. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And then you double time it again, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And you just relax the glutes so that everything jiggles. This is probably the only time I ever love everything to jiggle. Well, I can think of one other time, but it's probably not appropriate for the show. (laughs) Yes, it is. (laughs) I'm psyched to be here. I'm a fan of the show. I love the message that you're putting out there. I feel like it's a message that needs to be heard. And I'm just really psyched to bring some energy to to the show that you've got here. Adam, thank you for being here and bringing your sexy voice because you have a sexy voice. <laughs> Why, thank you, Susie. <laughs> you, what, there we go. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ratings I want just one. went up. Yeah, say so thank you, Allie, too. Thank you very much, Allie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need to turn my fan on, everyone. Okay. <laughs> We're all married here. Don't worry, Food Heels. This good. is a whole new type of podcast now. <laughs> well... You advertise the whole sex in the city thing, so we got to bring bring a little heat. You know? That is true. That we got to bring it. You're right. Let us let us prove to the audience who we truly are. Susie, yep. are you Samantha? Who are you? I'm just kidding. I'm Carrie. I know. I always say you're Carrie, and I'm Charlotte. I'm Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. Yes. Yes, uh, I am. This is going to be so good. Okay. <laughs> Adam, tell Food Heals Nation in your sexiest Samantha voice who you are and what you do. <laughs> well, uh, like you said in the, uh, in the intro there, the, uh, the PhD thing. I earned my PhD because I'm a previously heavy dude. I used to weigh 327 pounds, all right? And that was about 11 years ago now. And uh, I basically reached a point in my life where I was, I was ready for a change. And I realized for things to change, I had to change. And, you know, we can dive deeper into the process, but I basically sat down one night, I mapped out what I wanted to achieve in my life for the next five years. And I went out and crushed it. I did every single thing from losing a hundred pounds, falling in love, starting a family, starting a business that impacted my community. I helped my my hometown lose 35,000 pounds in that five year span. Wow. Uh, Just crazy stuff happened. And it was just kind of the the power of positive thinking. I, I quit being a crap magnet and I started to really focus on what I wanted to achieve instead of kind of what the world was was bringing to my doorstep. 
And yeah, so that's that's how I earned my PhD. And that's that I, I Allison, I've ever told you the story about why I started calling myself the PhD. Um, no, but I heard you tell it on another podcast, so I'll pretend I don't know. Please, yeah, so please go on. <laughs> I, you know, you know how the podcast deal is. You like you have certain shows. Where you're like, man, I could rock that show. I could, I, I could totally, you know, deliver for that audience. And I had this show that fit the bill for me. And this is uh, about a year and a half ago. I was like, I have to get on this show, but the individual only brought doctors on the show. Mm-hmm. So I filled out the little like bio thing and I put PhD behind my name. Like, I'll just, <laughs> and I was like, I'll just figure it out. And uh, you'll just so, lie. Yeah. Cause I knew I'm like, I'm going to deliver. And uh, so it, the interview, the pre-interview thing went really well. And she's like, yeah, I want to have you on. I was like, listen, I got to come clean. The PhD thing that stands for previously heavy dude. And she's like, I love it. And she's had me on twice since then. So uh, yes. it worked. It worked. It worked. I love that. <laughs> Tenacity. Fake baby. it till you make it. I was maid of honor for a friend's wedding and I was not doing a very good job. And I was drinking too much. I was hooking up with too many no, of the groomsmen. What do you mean? I've never done that at a wedding. <laughs> right? <laughs> Somebody else is getting married. You know, cue the drinks. Cue the not one, but two right. groomsmen. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was my night. And I thought, you know, in theory, it was a great time, but I took it too far. Right. And when you take it too far, um, you can create a scene and, and you know, I, I definitely did some things that I wasn't proud of. And I realized, uh, I was going to lose that friendship. I was going to, you know, lose my integrity, you know, what little bit I even had. And I just felt like that was the last straw of the mornings of waking up and being like, what did I do last night? Or, Oh, like, I can't believe I did that. But like, that was the last time, Danielle, like there were so many times where I'd be like, Oh, that's the last time you're ever going to act that way. But like, I couldn't, I couldn't keep it in check, you know, cause I didn't know any other way. So then that was, you know, that incident that happened at the wedding was a catalyst to be like, all right, well, let me try therapy. And I had been in and out of therapy before, but like, I never really took it seriously. And for some reason this time I got matched with the right person and it took, you know, and, and she recommended a group therapy. I started doing that, which was really helpful. And I realized, you know, for me, I started reading about things like self-love and being more positive, but like that wasn't working for me. But I realized though, I was like, okay, this self-love positive stuff, there's no way I can even grasp this right now because like, I don't even like myself. So I'm going to take all this information. I'm going to dumb it down so that I can just show up and be like in self. Okay. So I started kind of cultivating this process of not self-love, but self-okay. Like today, I love that so much because like sometimes it feels too far of a reach Mm -hmm. to be like, I love myself. Mm -hmm. And if you're in that deep, dark pit and you're reading the spirituality self-help shit, sometimes you can't get there and you can't possibly. So I love that. Let me just get to I'm okay. (laughs) Beautiful. I'm originally from New York City and I spent uh, many years as a dancer and an actor and I had horrible back and neck problems for a long time. And I went to every doctor and chiropractor and acupuncturist imaginable and I'd get relief sometimes and sometimes not. And then finally I found the practice of yoga and I started practicing and within about six months I was much better. My back and my neck and everything was better and I thought, what is this? I have to do more of this. So I I, um, I lived near Larchmont and at that time there was a, it's the oldest, uh, yoga studio in LA, the center for yoga, which is now yoga works. Mm -hmm. And I started out to pay for my yoga classes, doing something called Zen maintenance. The manager at the time had a sense of humor. (laughs) (laughs) And what I would do is I would wash blankets and clean the studios. This was about 18 years ago to pay for my yoga classes. Zen maintenance sounds much more glorified. It's very, it's glorified. Than calling it washing blankets. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. It's custodial yoga studio maintenance. (laughs) So I did that and I took as many classes as as I could and I just got so into it. I felt so much better. And one of my teachers said, you know, we're having a teacher training program a couple years into my studies and you should really do it. Um, And I said, oh, you know, I don't know. I'm I'm an actor. I don't know if I want to teach. And he he said, just just do it. It'll deepen your practice. So I did it uh, with the encouragement of my husband and I just fell in love. It all made sense. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'll do this, too. And then it kind of took over my first yoga class. This is kind of a funny story. Um, my husband and I were friends with somebody at the Amanda Foundation mm-hmm. for animals. And mm-hmm. we, it, there was a silent auction and we bid on some yoga classes at Yoga Works in Santa Monica. And 
we won the yoga classes, so we were so excited, and we had our little yoga mats. This was pre Zen maintenance days. This was, <laughs> my, this was my first introduction, <laughs> and um, we went to the yoga class, and we we were kind of it was very full, stuffed in like sardines kind of class, mat to mat. So I was right next to my husband, mm. and and we were doing the poses, and he would he's very. Um, He's very type A personality, and he uh, he would he'd, he'd kind of say, Shh, "You're supposed to have your um, leg up like this." <laughs> <laughs> that sp- must have been fun. It was really fun. You're, you're <laughs> supposed to put your hand behind your head. You're supposed, you know, and was giving me direction through the whole class. No and, way. Yeah, and I turned to him and say, "How about psst, you're supposed to have your eyes closed?" <laughs> <laughs> Really like showing yourself the result of a habit or a ritual or a system, whatever it might be, like actually showing yourself what that feels like, what it looks like, you know, what type of time freedom it can create in your life. I think that's what is going to get us as individuals to buy into the fact that rituals and habits and systems can be so, so powerful because once you experience it, And then you see the flip side of where you were before. I can guarantee you, you will be like, I cannot believe I didn't do this sooner. Yes, I can relate to that in so many different ways in my life. And they've all been small changes that have come about over time. But if I look back, like I can't imagine not having all of them, you know, as a part of my life, including this podcast. Susie and I meet every Tuesday and it's like the highlight of my week. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) That's so awesome. I love that you guys do it together in person too but we like having people in the studio but unfortunately you're you're super far away well next time we'll just fly to puerto rico yeah if you were in person live podcast there you go all right one last question kate is there going to be another podcast cruise that i can bring Susie on I hope that we get to experience something like that again. I would love for Susie to be a part of it. And Allison, as you know, it was just like such an amazing time connecting in that way with people because it wasn't just all about like, you know, session, 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 session. It wasn't just all about the party. Like it was such an amazing mix of all of those things. So I heard it was all about the karaoke. (laughs) It was. It was that too. (laughs) Actually, let's be real. It kind of (laughs) was. I see a little silhouette of a man, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the Fandango? Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me, Galileo, 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 Figaro, Magnifico. Nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. (laughs) Well done. Well Thank done. Thank you. That goes to Allison. Yes, it does. You <laughs> creep, that was awesome. Notes. That's a hard song to do in karaoke, I'm just going to say. Yeah, it is. I've done it, and the breath control for that portion of it is hard. Yeah. Because you're doing, like, three voices at once. It's tiring. You have to tiring. have, like, other people and have it all planned out, but who? Ha- that doesn't happen at karaoke. No, because everyone else is drunk. Yeah. And they're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> all right, Susie, I know you got this. All right. In West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground was where I spent most of my days chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool and all shooting some b-ball outside of school. When a couple of guys that were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared. She said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle and belly. <laughs> <laughs> you win that Goes one. Goes to yeah. Susie. Yes, it does. <laughs> Especially because you changed your voice for auntie, exactly. which was amazing. <laughs> or for mom. Yeah. Yes. Moving with the auntie. Well, they did it in the show. That was mm-hmm. awesome. All right. I feel the Halloween theme playing. It's getting dark now. Summer's ending. All right. Oh, I thought that was the song. I'm like, I don't know this. Summer's ending. I don't know this song. In the living's easy. All right. You're going to know this. No problem. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yes. You got this. I'm zoning out. So she said, Have I got a little story for you? What you thought was your daddy was nothing but a... While you were sitting home alone at age 13. Your real daddy was dying. Sorry you didn't see him. But I'm glad we talked. Oh, I... Oh, oh, I'm still alive. Hey, hey, Oh, I'm still alive. What? That's like a 
a hands down tie because I already know you can do it because you showed us earlier and you brought it. Susie, you are so good. <laughs> can I give you both a half point or both a yes. point? Yes, yes, I will accept I a half point. That. Um, it's funny because I wrote the, the notes to ask you that question, but I didn't do these because I wanted my assistant to do them so I wouldn't know them all. <laughs> And I, I knew your assistant did these. Is. What? I knew your assistant did these. <laughs> <laughs> like I gave some guidance. I was like, you know, Pearl Jam, Brittany. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love I love this because I finally get to do this impression on air that I've never done. Yes. You ready? I'm ready. <clears throat> My loneliness, he's killing me and I, I must confess, I still believe, still believe, when I'm not with you, I lose my mind, give me a sign, hit me baby one more time. Yes. <laughs> Woo. Who, who won that one? Definitely Jason. You sounded a little like Ethel Merman, so I guess I'll give it to Jason. I was trying to do it nasally the way she does it, but yeah. it didn't come out so well. Yeah. I was like, and I'll only Britney. Uh. Yeah, her voice is like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. I was Britney as, as her age now. Me and Britney. <laughs> me and You're Britney. right. I was teenage Britney. You were Britney, right? You were Vegas Britney. <laughs> <laughs> me and Britney have the same birthday, so I'm kind of like her sister. Oh, in really? Case you guys didn't know. Didn't yeah. Know. Yeah, we're like this. Wow. Oh, so. Wow. Just saying. All right, Susie, ready? Ready. I know you know this one. All right. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Mm-hmm. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see the troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best song. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hand it to Susie on that one. Wow, I'm, I'm honored. I'm, I'm not a singer. <laughs> no, but you, you. She brought it. You're working, you're working within your means. Baby. Well, you're Allison over- told me about this game and she's like, do you sing? And I was like, eh. Do you sing? I had, I had traumatic experiences as a child where I was told by a chorus teacher that I couldn't sing. She said, stand in the back and sing softly. That's sad. It was horrible. And it took me years to get over when I, and then I finally took singing lessons. I'm like, oh, I can sing. I just needed to be taught. I hope she spontaneously combusted. I hope so too. <laughs> into confetti. You need into Jason's bacon show. flavored confetti. Yeah, I think she, I think she yeah. has. Jason, so. your show will solve all of this. this yeah, it will hey, tell honestly, they can sing. That's right. It will. Yeah. It will. I don't want to do this one. You can veto it. Sa- is it sad? One. Is it a sad song? I just, it's too diff. I just told you my story. It's no, it's oh, not, it's okay, not sad. Because you sad. looked sad. If it's sad, like it's Like it was okay. a breakup song or something. No, 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 no. It's no. not a breakup song. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like, I want to lay you down in a bed of roses. <laughs> like, I can't listen to John Jovi anymore. All right. I, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better reaction. I like that reaction better. <laughs> my loneliness is killing me. You put it in twice? I don't know. I must comp- Didn't we just do this one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's now okay, I have to going. do the other no, one. No, no. Yeah. Why don't you just make one up? No, no. You do the other one. Now you have to because here's the thing. <sighs> you have to thing. deal with your issues. What resists persists, Susie. Oh, yeah. No. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait that I have This is my first podcast. I have to rate as explicit. Thank you and thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> fuck you and fuck you. Anytime. Bleep, 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 anytime, bleep, bleep, motherfuckers. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Anytime. <laughs> Straight out of Compton. Straight out of WeHo. <laughs> oh, all right. I, I can do this. I just, all right. Mama. Just killed a man, put a gun against his head, pull my trigger, now he's dead. Mama, my life had just begun, but now I've gone and thrown it all away. Everybody. Mama, Mama. I didn't mean to make you cry if I'm I'm not not back again. As if nothing really matters. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately. 